Eric Darling here with Darling Data, <clears throat> rated by uh, several prominent publications, uh, Wine Sniffer Magazine, Beer Gut Magazine, and uh, well, there are some others, but they all, they all got together and voted, and they rated me the most capable SQL Server consultancy <clears throat> in the entire world, even, even Atlantis is part of that. I don't know how computers work underwater, but you know there's a there's a there's a strong possibility that uh, if humans had stayed underwater, we would not have nearly as many DNS problems as we do today. <coughs> this is a just a short video on this uh, kind of grotesque Sunday to talk about uh, some changes that I made to uh, SP Human Events Block Viewer. Now, this started off as a, uh, a utility script that I could use to look at the blocked process report XML data that, uh, from, the, from the extended event that uh, SP Human Events would set up to, to get information about blocks, but I, I extended the, the, uh, the usability of this procedure a while back <clears throat> to look at uh, any extended event session that has blocked process report XML in it because uh, you know uh, human events is is great and it, it catches blocking but it you know it, it just uses the ring buffer and, and oftentimes you know not a lot of data stays in the ring buffer at once so it worked really well in the context of uh, the human events procedure which would log stuff from the ring buffer off to a table but you know, in the in the longer term, sort of uh, you know, gathering blocking data with clients, you know, you kind of you don't often want to set up things of that complexity. You just want to have an extended event that captures the block process report, and you want to read data from it and get information from it. Now, uh, the the cha there are two changes here, and uh, the cool thing is that since uh, SP hum since uh, a while back when I did a rewrite of SP Blitzlock. SP Human Events and SP Blitzlock share nearly the same code. So SP Blitzlock is over in the first responder kit, and that looks at the deadlock uh, extended event stuff. And thankfully, the deadlock extended event stuff and the block process report extended event stuff is pretty darn close XML-wise. So they share nearly the same uh, code, just, you know, one looks at deadlocks, the other one looks at blocking. But, of course, blocking begets deadlocks, so our blocking begets deadlocking, I think would probably be the better way of saying that. So uh, we got two for the price of one almost. Anyway, um, the two changes that uh, are in SP Human Events Block Viewer and uh, that I also have in a pull request out for SP Blitzlock are, uh, I think, good changes because um, of the, the, the way that the procedures used to work where they like you know they so the two, first change is uh, around uh, SQL handles so identifying plans that were involved in the blocking. Uh, it used to be that um, uh, both SP Human Events and SP Blitzlock would show you the SQL handles, but then it was up to you to go use um, whatever plan cache mining script you care about to go out to the plan cache and uh, and look for the execution plans of the queries that were involved in blocking or deadlocking. Uh, what I did was I added a, uh, a second result window to uh, both of those store procedures that will go out to the plan cache and look for SQL handles that were involved in the blocking and bring back some metrics about them. Now, uh, as it doesn't use query store because I don't know if query store is on. I didn't want to add a bunch of complicated checks and you know all that other stuff. It just seemed like a lot of work. So I'm not doing that. Uh, but I am looking at the plan cache. So what I did was I added a section of code that goes out to the plan cache and looks for execution plans for any of the queries that were involved in, in, in well, for, for block view or for blocking, for SP Blitzlock, it'll look for anything involved in deadlocks. Now, <clears throat> if you've been watching my videos for any uh, period of time, you'll know that I have slowly fallen out of love with the plan cache over time. And I think the reason for that is at least somewhat obvious here because not every plan is going to be in the plan cache when you go and look if your plan cache is unstable which a lot of servers that I look at the plan cache is somewhat unstable uh, if you go and look you might not find 
a very a, a lot of historical data in there. Often the the plan cache is less than 24 hours old, but uh, I figured it would be better to do this and make a good effort at finding execution plans for people than it would be to have them try to make the next logical step in the in the in the result output and go look for query plans of things that were involved uh, and for this procedure blocking for SP blitzlock deadlocking. So that's the first change, and you can see the separate results set here in available plans. Uh, and th I think this illustrates pretty well uh, why I am not totally in love with the plan cache. We only have blocking for a couple things in here, and th we have a whole bunch more blocking. Granted, some of these blocks were like many months and days ago, so I don't expect that to be in there. But I, I just want to show you this to sort of level set, like make sure that expectations are right, that not everything that is in the, the blocking, the block process report is going to have a plan available for it. But I want to make a good effort to go and find that stuff for you and show it to you. So, you know, for this, uh, for this, for uh, the <coughs> available plans that we have here, we can see this most recent blocking thing up here. And uh, this is the query that was involved in the blocking. And this is the query plan for it. Uh, you know, granted, you could probably do something with this knowledge where, you know, you have the predicate on, uh, you have a seek predicate, uh, and then we have, well, it's kind of funny how, um, uh, modification queries show up in here with this type of execution plan, because there's a predicate on, uh, the column that we're updating, which is not technically a predicate, because we're not actually searching on it. We're just looking for where, where ID equals something. But because we're updating the age column, for some reason it shows up as a predicate here. So we get the execution plan back. <clears throat> and then uh, I also grab as many um, execution metrics as I can from the plan cache. Uh, so, you know, you'll get le uh, the, when the plan was created, the last execution time, the count, um, you know, worker time, elapsed time, stuff like this, you know. So, like, all the sort of standard stuff that you would expect to get from... Uh, a, a, qu a query going out and looking at uh, looking for execution plans and query metrics. So there's a pretty good amount of stuff, pretty good amount of information in there. That's the first change. The second change is that uh, I started ranking or I started uh, prioritizing the output by which things had the most blocking associated with them. So before, the only thing that I was ordering by was check ID. I added another column to uh, the findings table, which is a sort order, which uh, when I do the inserts into the uh, findings table, uh, I order them by which thing had the most stuff going on. And then on the way out, uh, like I have a sorting column specifically for that. And then on the way out, I sort also by, I check, check ID and then that column. So when you go look at the results now, uh, you'll see in the findings column, which uh, I should probably expand a little bit so that it becomes a little bit more obvious what I'm doing here. We come over here, we can see that Stack Overflow has been involved in 37 blocking sessions, which ranks above uh, TempDB, which has had two blocking sessions. And then uh, for more specific checks, like which objects, indexes, stuff like that, have had more blocking associated with them, you can see 14, 8, 5, 3, uh, three, two, one, one, and then throughout all the results, uh, you know, like 35, two, 26, one, two, one, uh, you know, 38. So like all the stuff is ranked, all the stuff is sorted in here by which, uh, you know, things had the most blocking associated with them. Uh, I, uh, like I said, since Blitzlock shares nearly the same code base as this, um, I also added that change in a pull request out to uh, SP Blitzlock, you should see that in the next first responder kit update, whenever that is. Who knows? Brent's busy playing the slots. He might not get around to pushing that pull request through for a while. Who knows? But um, everything in here is ranked. Uh, so you see, like, even, like, the timing in here is ranked by which things had the most time associated with it. So you can kind of get a sense of where you should concentrate your efforts by, like, you know, which <coughs> database tables, indexes, stuff like that had the most uh, blocking events and blocking time associated with them. So uh, ho hopefully two good uh, changes that will make your life easier when dealing with blocking and deadlocking issues. Uh, this is all available in, the, in the, the main branch of my GitHub repo for Human Events Block Viewer. Uh, for, again, for SP Blitzlock, there's a, there's a pull request out for it. You can go hunt down the... Um, that branch over there and, and look for it if you want to sort of, you know, beta test a little bit 
uh, that version. Uh, but other than that, <coughs> it's about it's about it. Uh, but anyway, um, t two changes that I'm really happy with. Um, this this kind of this work was, was kind of uh, part of a, a weird like uh, code frenzy that I went on with like this and SP Quickie Store with the time zone stuff. Um, I don't think I don't think anything changed in SP Pressure Detector along with these two. But you know, again, stuff that I'm really happy with, stuff that makes my consulting job easier and that I want I want you know to pass along to make your life easier troubleshooting SQL Server because who knows someday you'll say you know what that Eric Darling he sure does a lot of good work we should we should hire him just to say thank you we shouldn't actually like have him do anything we'll just pay him money to say thank you for all the hard work and then go about your job with with great aplomb or something <laughs> don't worry I'm not shaking you down if I were, if, if I were shaking you down I'd show up at your job or your house, whatever, or, 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 or I guess that's both for a lot of people. Anyway, uh, it's Sunday. I got stuff to do. I just wanted to put this out there so that uh, you would be more aware of changes to this store procedure. Um, happy hunting for blocking. Happy, have a lot of fun resolving blocking, getting your server in tip-top shape. Uh, remember, read committed snapshot isolation level is uh, the key to resolving most blocking issues. So you should, uh, when, when possible, use that for your SQL Server databases because uh, it takes care of the most idiotic blocking scenarios that exist uh, in databases when read queries and write queries can block and deadlock with each other. So uh, really, I can't, um, I can't recommend making that change uh, more than I already do. Uh, if you're on SQL Server 2019 and up, Accelerated Database Recovery is a wonderfully complementary settings change to use alongside read committed sna snapshot isolation because you take the te you take tempdb out of the equation. Uh, you use the uh, persistent version store per database to read row versioning information from, which is great. It's a really really smart move on Microsoft's part. So you can take all the you know the the worries about tempdb contention. If you have a lot of databases that you would want to use RCSI, you can take that out of the picture, and uh, have them use that information instead. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get going now. I'm gonna get off my soapbox, chit chatting about this stuff. But uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your uh, hopefully long weekend. Uh, it's July 4th coming up for my American friends. Uh, we're gonna celebrate our independence from our British friends. I guess it wasn't always that friendly, but, you know, we've got, got a special relationship these days. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the free scripts. I hope you use them. I hope they are useful to you. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. All right. We're at lucky number 13 minutes now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this here. Goodbye.